Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am going to be doing a short story readathon wrap up plus the reads plus the books that I have been reading recently. Okay, so this week I just didn't have time to do a vlog because I was crazy busy. I had a job interview and I'm trying to get my room put together so that I can remodel it. I've got, uh, let me just show you. My entire book collection is on my dresser because I'm about to get a new bookshelf. So I've been working on that and it's been a mess. So I didn't have time to vlog my short stories that I read, but I did read them. So I am going to start with those and then I will get into my recent reads. So the first short story I read is a part of this collection by Elizabeth Strout and it is called Snowblind. I did this one for the prompt weather. Now this one, I only gave a three star. I felt like it was well written, but I just didn't really connect with the story. Um, it's about a girl who really loves the woods outside of her home and her dad starts getting really irritated with her going into the woods and he eventually forbids her to go and she can't, she can't understand why and she continues to go into the woods. So, um, very quickly she grows up and she finds out why, and it's a um, one of those family secrets that kind of devastates the family, and I just wasn't all that into it. It just wasn't that interesting. Um, I thought it was well written, but not my thing. Okay, so the next one I read was, okay, so I read for the humor prompt, I read Charles by Shirley Jackson. Now, this was a really cute story about a little boy who is going to kindergarten and he tells his parents every day about the antics of this little kid named Charles in his class. Things like Charles kicking people and punching people and all of that stuff. And his parents are just enthralled with all the stories about Charles. So. I won't say much more. It's a short story. If I say too much, I'll ruin it for you. But it was funny. I laughed. It's a good read, especially if you are a parent. So I rated Charles five stars because it was funny. Again, I think I am far too generous with my star ratings, but if I enjoy a story, I'm going to give it five stars just because it made my heart happy. The next one that I read was The Paper Menagerie by Ken Lau. I think is how you say it. I'm probably wrong. Um, this is about a young boy whose father is married to an Asian immigrant and his mom is able to make these creatures out of paper. It's origami and she can blow life into them. So they come alive and they become his friends. So the little boy, I can't remember his name, but he's very embarrassed by the fact that his mother doesn't speak English very well. And he essentially, because he's so embarrassed by it, he essentially punishes her for it by saying, basically, I'm not gonna speak to you unless you speak to me in English. And he treats her very badly. And it goes throughout his life with this type of treatment. And in the end, he gets a letter from her about her life. And it is a very good story. I think it, it's important because it shows you how much life can just fly by and you can miss out on 
a relationship with somebody basically for petty reasons. And so I thought it was really good. I gave this one five stars um, because it was just so well written. The next one I read is The Love Detectives by Agatha Christie. Now, this one I did for the mystery prompt on our bingo card, and it, it was really good, okay? So it's about a murder, obviously, and I'm trying to decide what details to give you. So a man is murdered, and the butler finds him, and the wife is up in her room. So the detectives come and they try to figure out what happened and they end up getting two confessions from two different people, but their confessions don't line up with the truth of what happened. And so they have to figure out what's going on. It was a very interesting mystery. It is one of the Harley Quinn mysteries and I really enjoyed it. So I gave that one a five star. Most of what I've read by Agatha Christie has been that way. Um, I'm sure at some point I won't like something that she wrote, but I really did enjoy this one. Okay, so those are the short stories I read this week for the short story readathon. Um, over this last month, I have also been reading all kinds of books. So I have six books to talk about, and I will give you the synopsis and my rating and everything, but I'm probably not going to talk a whole lot about them because we have to go somewhere this afternoon and I'm kind of in a time crunch. This was about the only time I could film, so I'm going to try to go quickly. Hopefully that's okay. Okay, so the first book that I read is Behind Closed Doors. So this one I found really good. Um, this is by B.A. Paris, and I've seen a whole lot of people talk about this, and I feel like there's some, I feel like it's mostly good. There's some people that don't like it, but I loved it. This is about a woman who marries a man that she, um, doesn't know very well, but he seems perfect, and then after she gets married, she finds out that he is completely different than what she knew. This one is a psychological thriller and he abuses her in that way. And I found it really interesting because I love learning about psychology and what, what happens to your brain in situations. And this one was really good. I don't want to say too much because I feel like you need to read it if you want to and I don't want to give too much away. But the first of it says, um, oh wait, now where is, yeah, okay. So this little blurb here says the perfect marriage or the perfect lie. So I have been doing something recently and I will put in a little snapshot of my reading journal. I have been writing down the first paragraph of each book that I've been reading just because I really enjoy that and then my thoughts and all of that. Um, but I am going to read you the first paragraph. That way, if you're interested in this, maybe that will catch your interest and you can pick it up and read it. Okay, so the opening. The champagne bottle knocks against the marble kitchen counter, making me jump. I glance at Jack, hoping he won't have noticed how nervous I am. He catches me looking and smiles. So this book about the first, I don't know, the first few chapters, I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? I don't see anything wrong. He's great, but you know, it's a thriller. And so I thought this was just really well written. She did an awesome job diving into this topic. You definitely need to pick this up. I gave this five stars. Okay, so the next book that I read, and I actually just finished this one. I started this one last summer, I believe, and it just kind of got, there's nothing wrong with it. It just, he knew it was going to be a really sad read and I just needed to be in the right space. I have something on my shirt. What 
Tris Barty. <laughs> it is what it is. It's just life. Anyway, I knew this was going to be a sad read, and so I set it aside until I was in the right brain space to read it. And let me tell you, if you're a Christian, I feel like you should read this book because it teaches you about faith in a very hard situation. So this book is called Left to Tell, and it is by Immaculate. Ilib, Iliba, it's by this author here. <laughs> um, now, this is a memoir, and this is about a woman who lived in Rwanda during the genocide that happened in the 1990s. This goes through her time through that. She was part of the tribe that was being um, taken out by the other tribe that lived there. It is the, the Hutus and the Tutsis, I think is how you say it. I'm probably wrong, but um, it goes through a little bit of the history and why these tribes had prejudice against each other, and then it dives into her time in hiding during all these murders. Now, during this time, I think it said there were like a million people murdered in Rwanda, and it was all ordinary citizens that killed. So these are her neighbors and her friends that are killing her family and other friends of hers. And it it's just so heart-wrenching and heartbreaking. But what I really appreciated is her talking about her faith. Now, sometimes memoirs, I feel like, especially sometimes Christian memoirs, I feel like sometimes, sometimes it's almost a little bit prideful in I did this so well and so I'm gonna write about this and I don't know if you've picked that up in some or not but I have this one I did not feel like she was like that I feel like she was very humble and gave God the glory with the story she was um, hidden in a bathroom for three months with seven other women. This bathroom is there. She shows a picture of it and let me, I can find that picture. Okay. So this is the bathroom that they were in. It is very tiny. So in the midst of being in this bathroom, she decides that the best thing for her to do is pray. And she says that she prayed most of the time while she was in there. And during this time, she also read her Bible, and she learned so much, and she grew so much. But this book goes through diving into the hatred that she felt towards those that were killing. They could hear outside all of the murders that were going on. There were times when the killers would come into this house and search for anybody that was being hidden, and they knew that these guys were just like a wall away from them. And it was just so heart-wrenching. Um, but I really feel like it's an important read for Christians because we're not guaranteed the freedom that we have here in the U.S. and in other places where we enjoy our Christian life. Um, there's... We, in, we have this privilege right now, but it could end, you know, one day. And so reading books like this, I feel like is important because it can show you a picture into life being normal and then life going crazy and what we can do during those situations. And also it gives you 
perspective on what you're going through right then. Um, lately, you know, with the economy going kind of crazy and gas prices being so high and food going up in price and, and all of those things, it's been hard not to be a little worried, you know, and this book kind of puts it in perspective for me. You know, we, yes, things are kind of crazy right now, but we are doing well and we're blessed and yeah. Um, I hope that none of us ever have to face something as terrible as this, but if we do, I also hope that we have the faith that she had and the ability to depend on God rather than turn away from him because God is there with us in the good times and the most terrible times. And I really, really enjoyed this book for that reason. So I'm going to read you the first paragraph and, um, yeah, I'm going to read you the first paragraph. Okay. So I heard the killers call my name. They were on the other side of the wall, and less than an inch of plaster and wood separated us. Their voices were cold, hard, and determined. Like I said, this one, if you're a Christian, you need to read it. It's very well written. The next one I read, I also started last year. I am a giant nerd. Um, I really, really like cryptozoology. If you don't know what that is, it's, it's animals that are like the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot. Things that people aren't sure if they really exist or not. And I lean towards the side of usually believing that they exist and we just haven't discovered them yet. And so I just eat this stuff up. So when there's a book about it, I have to read it. So the next book I read is Monster by Frank Peretti. Now, <laughs> this one is not my favorite that I've read by him. Um, my favorite is The Oath. I really loved that one, but this one was good too. This one has Bigfoot in it. And I would say this is a thriller, but it really takes a science fiction kind of twist at the end that I didn't see coming at all. Um, it's about this woman and her husband who are going to trek through the woods and just kind of have like a wilderness week where they survive in the woods. And they end up coming across this terrible, uh, almost like a murder scene. And they know that something horrible has happened. This man is hanging from a tree. Frank Peretti um, has a way of telling things that are gory without making it too gory, I think. I might be, it might not be good for everybody, but there is some gore in here um, because an animal has killed this person, but in a way that it just doesn't seem possible. It seems like this animal is bigger and stronger than anything that they know exists. And so they end up obviously running from this murder scene and they hear this almost like a banshee scream and so they're running in the middle of the night in the dark and she trips and breaks her ankle and he loses track of her and she ends up getting picked up by Bigfoot. Um, and so the story tracks him going through and trying to find her and people are suspecting that maybe he killed her and is just lying about what happened because obviously Bigfoot's not real. And then it's following her, um, her time with this family of Bigfoot, she, she ends up basically being adopted by one of the female Bigfoots or Bigfoot or Big Feet. I don't know what the plural for that would be, but anyway, she gets adopted as a child by this and she has to like kind of learn how to survive with these wild animals that could tear her apart and so yeah it's thrilling takes a scientific science fiction almost like a frankenstein type situation at the end and it was really good i rated this 
four stars, I think. Yeah, I rated this four stars and mainly because it just, I don't know. It just didn't have me as thrilled as I would have liked to have been, but it was really good. Okay, so I'm gonna read you the first paragraph of that book. It says, the hunter, rifle in hands, dug in a hill and came to a sudden halt on the game trail. Motionless, nearly invisible, in a thicket of service berry and crowded pines, he heard something. Okay, so the next book I listened to on Scribd, and this is a middle grade book. It is called The Turtles of Oman. And this is about a little boy whose parents are given this opportunity to move to the United States and go to college for three years to advance their careers. As if I remember correctly, they're professors. And so they want to go to the University of Michigan. And, you know, I think essentially they're either getting their master's or their doctorates. I can't remember if it tells what they're getting, but they live in Oman and they are going to go live in Michigan for three years. This story follows the little boy Arif and he is not okay with moving. He does not want to pack his stuff. His cousins and aunt and uncle are moving in to their home while they're gone and he doesn't want his cousins to take over his room. He doesn't want to leave his cat and it's just his this follows the week before they leave. So their dad, his dad flies to Michigan to get everything set up for them. And they stay for a week longer to get everything closed down in their house, all their stuff packed up that they wanna take. And this follows that week of saying goodbye to people, his friends, his cousins. And toward the middle to the end of the book, his grandfather comes and takes him on a few different outings. And they're just really amazing um, times with his grandfather. So these outings with his grandfather are just heartwarming. It's them spending time together, his grandfather explaining to him that things are gonna be okay and that this is gonna be an adventure and he's gonna come back and be a different person and that's okay. And I just really loved this story. It was heartwarming. It dove into a culture that I've never read about before. Oman is not a country that I have learned about. And now I'm interested in learning about it. So maybe I'll pick up a nonfiction about that country so I can learn a little bit more. But this was really, really cute. Okay, so I'm going to read you the first paragraph of this book. Arif Alamaris stared at the musket international airport security guards. They looked very serious in their brown uniforms, checking tickets, waving travelers forward. Arif wished he had planned to give his dad a turtle to carry in his pocket. Um, and also this cover is just beautiful. Loved it, five stars. Okay, so the next one I read, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Now, this is not a perfect book. Um, it's definitely, you kind of have to suspend reality a little bit to uh, be okay with some of these scenarios. I don't know if in real life a high school senior could do the things that she did, but I'm okay with just listening to a story and not really trying to put too much thought into logic. So this is a story about high school senior Pippa who has a, it's called a capstone project for her senior year, and she is supposed to pick a topic to do a project on. So she decides that she's gonna pick a topic and she is going to investigate a murder that happened five years earlier with a uh, two seniors that went to the same school as her. The girlfriend is murdered and the boyfriend kills himself, but she knows the boyfriend Pippa does, and she always thought he was a very nice guy and very kind-hearted and really didn't think that he was the one that did it. And so she wants to investigate this murder. So in the midst of it, she uh, meets his brother who is basically ostracized from the town because 
of his brother's crime, supposedly. And he, she and him investigate the murder and they find out the truth behind it. And there's all kinds of mysteries. Um, I honestly, I'm just gonna tell you, I thought it was a particular person and I was completely wrong. And the, the real situation, I would have never guessed. So it was a really good twist at the end. Like I said, she interviews these people that have been traumatized by this murder, including family members and things. I don't know if that would be something that people would be willing to do after this. Um, maybe, possibly, but I don't know. I'm okay with it. It was really, really good. It was a great read. It was a fast read. I love it because it has uh, mixed media. So there's like text messages and emails and her logs um, from her stories and court papers and things like that. So I really did enjoy this. I can't wait to read the next one because the next one she dives into a podcast and I think that's going to be really, really interesting. I give this one five stars. Okay, so I'm going to read you the first paragraph of this book. Pip knew where they lived. Everyone in Fairview knew where they lived. Their home was like the town's own haunted house. People's footsteps quickened as they walked by, and their, woods, their words strangled and died in their throats. Shrieking children would gather on their walk home from school, daring one another to run up and touch the front gate. Okay, and the very last one I read, I read it on Scribd. Um, this is The Ascendants of a Bookworm, and it is a manga. Guys, come on. This is such a cute book. Okay, so the premise is... And this is a long series. I think right now there's 19 in the series. I don't know if they're going to add any more, but I am super excited about reading this because I fell in love with the little characters and I'm excited about it. But the premise, this woman, college student, absolutely loves reading. She loves reading everything and learning as much as she can. And she ends up getting killed by a bookshelf falling on her. And in her dying thoughts, she prays, God, if I am to be reborn, please send me to a place where I can read to my heart's content. And she ends up going to a world that doesn't have very many books, and most people don't know how to read or write. And paper is so expensive that she can't even get paper to write on for herself. So this is all about her trying to figure out how she's going to get books because she cannot stand not having them. This is, to me, a very funny concept because imagine living in a world without books. What would you do? I would think I would go crazy. So anyway, I read this one and it was super cute. Um, I'm going to read you the first paragraph from it. I rated this one five stars. Um, it says, there once was a woman named Yorano Motatsu who loved books, history, philosophy, religion, geology, folklore, mathematics, biology, art, language, fiction. From the bottom of her heart, she loved these books that were packed with all the knowledge of mankind. She found no greater joy than living a life surrounded by books. But in a stroke of irony, she was crushed to death by books. As she died, she had only one thought. Dear Lord, if I am to be reborn, please give me a life where I can read books to my heart's content. I cannot wait to finish this series. Okay, so in the midst of all of that, I had three DNFs. So I will quickly mention those and then I'll wrap this video up. But I had, uh, I started Brain on Fire. This is a memoir by Susan Callahan. And I was really interested in it. It goes into her, essentially like a mental break that she had for a couple of months in her life and how she felt during that time 
what happened, the diagnosis that she got, all of that. Um, I started reading it and I was listening to it and there was a lot of F-bombs and I am just not. So this one has F-bombs, but they are scattered throughout the book and they're never like repeated over and over in a sentence. I don't like sentences where we're going to use the F word several times and then a few sentences later use the F word several times. I just, it's just not, not okay with me. So that's the problem I had with that book. And so I stopped reading it. So the next one I DNF'd is this one, The Revolution of Marina M. And this is by Janet, fin Janet Fitch. Um, I just wasn't all that interested in the story. I don't know if there's, uh, if I would, would have read farther, if I would have gotten interested in it, but I read for a little while and I just wasn't connected to it. And to me, there's so many books I want to read that I don't want to push my through myself through something that I'm just not interested in. So I DNF'd that one. The next one I DNF'd is called Bluebirds. And this is by, I believe her name is Sharon Cameron, but I'm going to put the cover here so you'll be able to see it. Um, Again, it was just not a story that caught my interest, and honestly, I am, I'm kind of burned out on World War II historical fictions. I've read a few recently, and I'm just not in the mood for them right now, so possibly in the future, I might go back to those two. They're both World War II historical fictions, but right now I'm just not in the mood for them. So I am setting them aside and not finishing them for the moment. So that is my reading wrap up recent reads for, first of all, my short story readathon week three. And then the second half is my recent reads for the entire month. So I have been having an amazing time reading lately and I hope you have been too. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.